It basically just comes down to this. Continuous updates require continuous work, which requires continuous financing. Maybe more surprising than free updates coming to an end now is that they lasted for as long as they did in the first place, for almost a decade. But here's a bit of history on machine tools and my other add-ons that goes more into detail about how things started, evolved, and why we are here today. Machine tools started out as a free add-on, publicly released when Blender 280 released in 2018. Before that, it only existed as a loose collection of individual scripts I've used myself. And this was after I had already developed and released early versions of Decal Machine and Mesh Machine. Selling these two and earning an income from that was what allowed me to spend time on machine tools, which is less focused and a more generalized tool set, mostly basic convenience tools and menus that touched on a wider range of areas in Blender. Over time, machine tools kept growing and I spent increasingly more time on it, exactly because of how wide its scope is. There were just always more and more opportunities to streamline various elements of Blender or enhance them. And I always preferred doing big workflow add-ons, collections of many tools rather than single-purpose add-ons, and I want to continue doing it that way. It's convenient for me, and I think for most users too. As a consequence, however, I didn't earn anything from machine tools despite spending more and more time on it. It was all still just financed by Decal Machine and Mesh Machine, and so machine tools being free was my way of giving back to the community. In 2021, with version 0.8, I made a first change and added a few more advanced tools to machine tools, but introduced them as part of a paid machine tools variant called Deus Ex, instead of releasing them as dedicated in separate smaller add-ons. Machine tools was still free, but if you wanted access to these particular tools, you'd have to get Deus Ex for a tenor, which I think is still a steal. In 2024, three years and another 11 free feature updates later, the situation had changed for the worse. Revenue had been on a decline for a year, and if it were to continue, it would threaten machine tools or at worst my business entirely. So I retired machine tools as a free add-on and introduced the new paid base variant called Prime. I think the sheer amount of tools and features more than justified that. And I think both Prime and Deus Ex were and are still absurdly underpriced for the amount of work I put into the add-on and the value you can get out of it. I mean, there are small, single-purpose add-ons out there that cost as much as Deus Ex or more, after all. One year later now in 2025, and the situation has only gotten worse. It seems like the entire market is in decline. I've speculated about potential reasons for that last year already, but whatever is causing this decline in revenue, it continues and seems to accelerate. And so I have no choice but to start charging for feature updates now. I simply cannot continue to work for free, which is what free feature updates ultimately are. Free updates have always only worked for as long as there was a sufficient amount of new customers and new users coming into Blender, and in particular into my products. And even though it seems to be expected by a good number of users in the ecosystem, I never promised free updates to anybody. I offered them because I could afford to. For some context, I've released roughly 100 free feature updates across just the three of my main add-ons over the past eight years, that is one per month on average. I would have been foolish to promise that this would continue forever, and it was inevitable that it would end someday. This is what I have told everybody who inquired about it too. Of course, for some creators, it is an easy promise to make, but then few actually have a backlog of updates like I do. What good is such a promise when there won't be any updates, or a product is abandoned in a year, or replaced by version two as an entirely new product? I've seen the Blender commercial ecosystem change a lot over the past years. The success of some has seemingly attracted others trying to make a quick buck and some trying to benefit from the work of others. My own products and those of other creators are being resold by people who are not at all involved in the development and who don't contribute anything to it, and I have no way of stopping that. That includes my non-GPL licensed artwork and assets for what it's worth. My code is also being copied and resold within other products without attribution, which happens to be a GPL violation. And various features are being ripped off and imitated too, of course, and have been for years. Also, markets are being exploited and product rankings manipulated, with some creators employing fake sales via massive secret discounts and fake reviews. Users are being misled not just by this, but also by low-effort affiliate trash being pushed down users' throats on YouTube, Instagram, and X. At least for a subsection of the market, there is no honor and respect among artists anymore, it seems. Everything goes, apparently, 
a lot of shady tactics and grifting, and even straight-up scamming. It's quite sad. And I'm just saying this to ask you, what kind of incentives do you think such behaviors create? Can creators really be expected to continue work on free updates just based on that point alone? This is not an environment that incentivizes and rewards innovation, that is for sure. And it's not fun to work and try to compete in such an environment either. But anyway, I don't want to rant or complain. I want to continue doing what I love. So what does the future hold? For now, I will limit the free update period to one year after the initial purchase. And buying an update then extends that period for another year, giving you access to all feature updates released within that time frame. I will aim to price updates at 10% of a product's base price, but for already low-priced products like machine tools, I have to go a little higher and will try 20% for now. Otherwise, market fees and a flat transaction fee eat up essentially all of the earnings I would otherwise get from a $1 update purchase, which would defeat the purpose of all of this. You would pay for it, but I wouldn't get anything. Just the market and payment processor would, and so the Machine Tools Prime update will cost $2, and the DOSX update will cost $4. No doubt some people will hate this, and I have to accept that. And no doubt a few people will feel like this is a subscription, but it's really not. I'm not forcing anybody to update, and you can use the version you have access to for as long as you want with the supported Blender version. But I do hope for your continued support, and I'm trying to be as transparent as possible, hence this video. If this goes well, I'm open to extend the free update period to two years after purchase. Nothing is set in stone here. This is new territory for me too, but I really have no choice and have to do something to change course of what is a sinking ship. Should this not work out, then I'll have no choice but to split my add-ons into smaller, more focused products as a last resort. If you have any questions, feel free to get in touch with me. Thank you for watching and listening. As always, I appreciate your support a lot. It's what makes all of this possible.